the year is wrapping up now. Things are closing. We are in a season of thanksgiving, in a season of celebration. But I want us to um, plow back a little and then to where we started this year. On Wednesday, we had a, a question and answer session. We took questions and then... Uh, and I want to comment on one of the questions asked. That person said, Pastor, okay, that person said, Pastor, it's a common thing amongst believers at this time, at this end time, experiencing weakness in faith. What shall a child of God do not to be a victim? Let me take it again. Pastor, it's a common thing amongst believers at this time, at this end time, experiencing weakness in faith. What shall a child of God do not to be a victim? Well, we answered that, but I, I just decided we need to talk of that in the general house day, and I will take us back to where we started this year, and we are done for the service. And then we... The rest of the year will be celebrations. Matthew 24, verse 12. Jesus is discussing about the end time. And then he goes to verse 12. Okay, let me let's, let just read from verse 1 to 12 so that we have volume in reading. The Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines in diverse, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. We betray one another and we hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Verse 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And because lawlessness, iniquity will abound, the love of many shall grow cold. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. So this person recognized that a lot of believers are experiencing weakness in faith. What shall a child of God do? Now, let me give advice in five areas. Number one, stay in daily fellowship with God. Stay in daily fellowship with God. The strength that comes from God is not like you're pumping a tire. It's just that time you devote to spending with him, worshipping him, studying your Bible, not because you want to preach, but you're feeding your spirit. I'm not preaching from what I read yesterday as part of my devotion. I feed my spirit every day from the word of God. Just like your physical body needs food to survive, your spirit needs food to survive. 
And the food that the spirit feeds on is the word of God, is spiritual food. So when you take your Bible, you say, let me feed my spirit. Let me eat. Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. So what you need to keep alive and vibrant is not just physical food, bread and butter. But you need the word of God to feed your spirit so that your spirit can grow strong. There was something Benihin said several years ago that just struck a chord in my heart. He said that some of the highest spiritual highs are the easiest to attend to. It takes just that consistency, daily fellowship with God, your devotion, time of devotion, don't play with it. That's where you draw strength on a daily basis. You see, when people are moving strong, they're drawing strength regularly from God. And when people become weak, they lose strength on a daily basis, a little every day. They're draining until they find out they're weak now. Little by little, grain of sand by grain of sand, you're just going. Because nothing is coming in and you're just... If I give you 10,000 naira now, unless you find a way of multiplying it, adding to it on a daily basis. Once you're spending from it, I don't care whether it's 10 naira a day, it's going. Eventually, you will have nothing left. There are exercises that generate spiritual energy. And there are exercises that expend it. I'm preaching now. I'm expending spiritual energy. So to gain back, I have to replenish. How do I do it? Where I worship God in private, especially now. For that personal touch of God. Study his word. Read from his word. Wow, is this what this thing is saying? You're feeding your spirit. Praying in tongues, charging up myself. If you charge your uh, cell phone battery yesterday and you're using it now actively, if you have a strong battery, a cell phone that has a strong battery, maybe it, uh, it can take you till Monday morning. But by tomorrow, if you don't charge it, that phone will no more be useful. So in Jude verse 20, the Bible tells us, and you, beloved, Building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That time you spend speaking in tongues, you're charging up your, your, not just your spirit, your entire being. Spending time in tongues charges up your entire being. That phrase used here is like, is, is, is the same. Praying in the Holy building up yourself, it's like charging up yourself. It's a language that could be used when the dynamo was in use. But now we have something. Dynamos are no more coming like, like that. But we have batteries now that, uh, that uh, use, uh, what do you call it now? Um, same, that, uh, that use alternating current. And, you know, so when you charge them up, you need to charge them up. Uh, after some time, they go down. You charge them up again. They go down, you charge them up again. That's how the human being should live. Isaiah said in Isaiah 40 from verse 28, from verse 27, he said, why are you crying, O Jacob? And why are you saying that my just claim has been denied me? Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from God, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Why are you speaking like that? Verse 28, have you not known? We learn to wait on the Lord consistently on a day. Don't be too busy for God. It's those that honor God that God honors. If you have no time for him, he will not have time for you. It's just as simple as that. God honors those who honor him. Okay? So stay in daily fellowship. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14 says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. We recite it without sometimes tapping into the provision of the word of God there. 
that fellowship, daily communion with the Holy Spirit, koinonia, that time you interact with the Holy Spirit. You need it if you're going to remain strong. More than ever before, the things that can drain any man, any person are available in our society. Number two, stay in regular fellowship in the church. Wednesday, be in the church. Sundays, be in the church. Anytime the doors of the church are open, be in the church. There are things you gain from a corporate anointing. It's just because of those of you that we are not here on Wednesday that I have to go through this. If not, we dealt with this on Wednesday. Stop treating God like something you don't need. As an option. option something optional. Stop treating God as optional. Stop relating with God as someone that is optional you can do without him. He's not an option. He's your life. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. God is not an option to choose from. He's the one that created you. He knows your makeup. He knows when you fall. Peter, Peter, Peter. Satan has put a requisition before me to have you that he may sift you like a come. Like wheat. Jesus told Peter. But I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Peter said me, it's not possible for me to fail. He said me, I'm, I'm Peter Okute now. You know me, nobody call me Okute. He said Peter, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Peter was depending on his own energy. And he fell. Laziness will rob you of your time of fellowship with God. And you become weaker. And the child works strong in spirit. Talking about John the Baptist. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can work strong in spirit. So the second thing I'm saying is stay in regular fellowship with God. Wednesdays be here. Unless there is something beyond your power to be here. Be here on Wednesdays. You can't be giving God two hours in a, in a week. And expect the fullness of God. From your attitude towards fellowships. I can imagine when, what is happening without supervision in your home. Don't tell me you have a private life. God says we should not neglect the fellowship. Uh, Hebrews 10.25 We should not neglect the gathering together of the brethren as it is the habit of some people. You will continue. I can get by. I'm getting by. Something thought like that. But he was compromising little by little until he began to touch on the very thing that was the source of his spiritual strength. And he woke up and thought it was business as usual. He didn't know that God has gone far from him. Not forsaking this. Go back to verse 24. Verse 24. And let us consider one another to stir up love and good works. We do it as we fellowship together. 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. God knows those that don't come to church. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Time is running out. This is not the time. Somebody told us, so a friend of mine told us some years back. He said we are in injury time now. You know in football when it's injury time. Stay in fellowship. In isolation, withering, you begin to wither. Isolation sets in. Iron sharpens iron. So does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. That's when the friend is available. Number three, stay with your shepherd. I say stay with your shepherd, the pastor God gave to you. Anybody can go on anything and be loading up yourself with information you don't need from sources. Even spiritual, one of the danger, present dangers of our time is spiritual contamination. Many 
pastors have soiled their hands. Sometimes I feel ashamed of saying it, but it's the truth. Pray. And when you discover your shepherd, stay with him, listen to his voice. Ambivalence will only get you weaker. Look at those letters to the seven churches in the first three chapters of Revelation. To the angel of the church in Spain as right. The angel is the messenger. That's the pastor of the church in Spain as say. He tell you the situation of your tell you, give him a specific message for that congregation. You can't combine what God is teaching us here with every other source. I mean, you can get, you can listen to messages, but to be honest with you, and you have heard me say it before, especially in smaller circles, there are few people I can listen to in this time, in this season, in this generation. Very few. And some of them are not alive anymore. There are very few of these things you see on. Because the people that we, he said, that we come up and say, Man, if you have money, you can get on there. There's no sifting anymore. And listen to me, it's information that, forms your, that, that, that forms your belief system. The information you're receiving. Spiritual contamination is easy. It's very easy. You're looking for solution. You're looking for knowledge. If you stay with what God is teaching us here, what our pastors are bringing to you here, and then stay with your study of the Bible. You don't need some of the things you're, you're, you're hunting for. You don't need them. You don't need them, really. I've, if I'm not going to be available for service, I don't have fears about who to handle. I have choice as to who can handle the service. And I know they will deliver. The quest, Satan has always used the quest for knowledge to lure people away from where God planted them. He did that to Adam and Eve. He will do that to you if you allow him. So stay with the shepherd. The, my sheep hear my voice, Jesus said in John chapter 10, and they follow me. The voice of a stranger they will not follow because they don't know the voice of a stranger. Some of us know the voice of strangers. You have to be discerning. There's so much people are just, if you have a platform to preach on any of those these things now, you can be churning out prophecy and because you're big, people think that's true. It's not always true. And some of the things they teach you are not even Bible based. They're not pure. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. That word sincere means unadulterated. Unadulterated. Desire the pure milk of the word. The unadulterated word of God that you may grow by it. Not the one that will ruin your faith. Some of the things you are struggling with in your belief system are because of information that have come in that are countering your knowledge of God, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. But you opened up to it. It's not everybody I open up to. Like I told you, there are few restaurants I can feed from on earth today. Very few. Most of the what you see, even the ones that are not spiritually polluted, are emotional massaging. Emotional massaging your emotions ever and that people love it. That does not build a strong spirit. It's the word of God that builds a strong spirit. Most of what you see is all about motivational talks. You don't need to be a Christian to do motivational talk. You don't need to be a pastor to do motivational talk. Napoleon Hills was the, the, maybe the godfather of motivation. He's not a minister. He was not a minister. Yes, to the angel of the church, you see that to the angel of the church, the messenger of the church in Laodicea say specific message to different congregations. No two messages were the same. Stop listening to strangers. When people come up now, they, they, I, 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 I rather watch 
discovery channel, zone reality, depending on what they than watch some of the things I hear on cable nowadays. I don't waste my time. When I'm listening to Discovery or any of the National Geography, I know I'm getting knowledge that, look what, Dr. Okay, not, not some of the things I see happening around that have nothing to do with faith. They've ruined everything. Even deliverance is not biblical. All kinds of things that get you yoked spiritually. Be careful who you listen to. Some of you like prophecies. I didn't tell him anything. No. Do you need to tell him anything? I, first, I didn't tell him anything. Trash! As many as are led by the Spirit of God that the mature sons of God. God never told us we'd be led by prophecies. When I was telling you some weeks back, forget those prophecies that that, that election has, God has shifted. Did you believe? Some of you didn't believe. They will, you will look at the power of incumbency, but God has shifted. Some of us know how to judge things. Homosexuality and pride and discrimination against fellow human beings. Which one is a worse sin? I don't know yet. But I know pride is the first sin. It's the mother of sins. Do you like homosexuals? I like homosexuals, but I don't like homosexuality. It's a disgusting thing. I can never endorse it. But it's not the biggest and only sin there is. It's a sin when you have held down a people for 400 years and you're still reinforcing things that hold them back down. It's a sin. It's a vice. Number four has to do with like number three. I say stay with your shepherd. Number four, avoid getting involved in every wind of doctrine. Waves. One of the latest waves is now this hyper grace message that is not biblical. There is no person that is teaching that thing in Nigeria today that can stand with me. And prove before me that those things that say in a scriptural, you have to remove something for them to stand. And so you see big men preaching it, that does not make it right. Are you hearing me? It doesn't make it right. Avoid getting involved. In every wind of doctrine, Ephesians 4. I don't care what you preach. If my spirit does not accept you, usually I end up being right. Ephesians 4, from verse 13. Okay, let me take it from verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, behaving like children, tossed, up, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, any doctrine that comes, you say, Yo, so that's the letters, you're wrong. Children, come up to maturity. Every wind of, it's a wind, it's a wave, it will go away soon. But before it goes away, it has hurt some people's faith. There have been waves, they come, they go. By the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ. Get mature and act maturely. Second Timothy 3, 7 talks of people who are ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Somebody say truth. Ever learning. 
but ever learning, but never, ever, never, ever learning, acquiring knowledge, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, to the knowledge of verity. So keep your faith simple. Second Corinthians 11.3 singleness. That word simple there, it means singleness, simplicity. That nobody should lead you away from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity, singleness. Be sing, have a single focus. Since it means also sincerity. That's without pretense. Number five, watch and pray. This is what Jesus told the disciples. And Peter was telling him, I'm strong, now I come for Watch and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Luke 22, 31 to 33 and 40. To think that a man that once gave his pastor a car that cost 6.5 million in the, in the 90s is backsliding. Is backsliding and going with these things. Chieftaincy title. Eh. Let's see that things he stands, take heed, let's see fall. It will be, it will be. In law, there is something they talk of double jeopardy. It will be double jeopardy after your suffering in this world again. You miss the mark and miss heaven. It's double suffering. In double jeopardy, it's like punishing somebody two times for the same offense. After suffering here, this stress that is on earth today, stress that is in our environment, then you go up, you go and you 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 you, you lose your prospect of heaven. That, that person is a, is a double loser. It's a double loser. Don't allow the devil to soccer you. You'll be a loser and they soccer at the same time. Watch and pray. Six, and the last one, depend on God to keep you. Don't depend on yourself like Peter. Look at Jude 24 and 25. It starts with a little here, a little fornication here, a little watching of pornography there, a little somebody, one man of God said, does, uh, he said you're fingering iniquity. A little fingering iniquity here, another one there. A keep away from a service that God had in mind for. A little here, a little there, a little here, a little there, a little here. You've gone far. Before you know it, you've gone very far. And one of the tough things I've experienced in life is that when you miss the part of the shepherd, it's very difficult on your you, it's impossible on your own to get back there. It will take the shepherd. You crying out to the shepherd to help you for you to get back on track. You can't find your way back. It's very, it's one of the most difficult things. Jude is different from Judges. One is in the Old Testament. Another is in the New Testament. That's one of the differences. Now, let's read this together. One, two, go. One, two, go. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. There is somebody that is not hearing his voice, hear or her voice. Let's go again. One, two, go. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 
To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Depend on God, no matter what, how strong you are as a person. Depend on God. If you're married, there is no reason on earth you should be looking at another woman or looking at another man. What's wrong with you? Depend on God to keep you from falling. All right, that's it for that question, right? Huh? God, as early as the second quarter of last year, made known to me that the a prophetic pursuit for this year is complete recovery still, which was what we pursued last year, complete recovery. And then, towards the last quarter of last year, he told me that that, pro that complete recovery is a three-year program. You know, but we didn't know what was going to happen. There. And I told you, didn't I tell you? I told you about it, is he not? I, not, I, nobody was talking of coronavirus then. We didn't know how this year will we, we be, but he told me it's a three-year program. Gave me um, Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Can we go to Hosea? Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has tricked him, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of God. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Go back to verse 2. The third day, some, sometimes in scriptures, when he gave me this scripture, I know that a day there means a year. Sometimes a day is used to represent a year, especially in Revelation, when a lot of times when he's talking of three and a half days, you know, he's talking about three and a half years, and so on. So, after two days, he will revive us. This is like the second day of that program. And the second day is wrapping up. On the third day, he will raise us up. There will be resurrection. There will be resurrection. Expect the capping of what he's doing. Without the resurrection of Jesus, all that he labored for and the suffering would have been in vain. Expect a resurrection. 2021 is our third day in this program. It's, and it's the third year. Are you hearing me? Expect a resurrection. Expect a resurrection. But you know, how many of us know that this, this year has been an absolutely unusual year? The kind of shaking that has taken place on earth this year, I've never seen it all my life in one year. Nations have been shaking, individuals have been shaking, families have been shaking, businesses have been shaking, churches, ministries, some ministries will not survive, some businesses will not survive the shaking. It's been a year, a very unusual year this year. And when God was telling me that that's a three-year plan, he, had, he, he knew what was going to, he knew what he would allow this year. When he says, I will shake the heavens and the earth, nations have been shaking, the mightiest of them. This coronavirus affected those G7 nations more than any other nation. And the best of the nations in terms of advancement, America has been the one that has suffered the most. Even when you consider it per capita, the thing has so humiliated America. In certain places now, again, this period, like a pastor in, uh, uh, what's this, McCain's place, state? In Arizona. They have to call in the National Guards to help because the morgues, the mortuaries are full. They don't to handle dead people. These are individuals. These are human beings. Husbands, wives, children, Uncle, somebody, you see, in my place, they say when 
a, the corpse of a stranger is being carried, you will think it's a bunch of wood. When the person that they are carrying his corpse is a, is a stranger to you, it's, to you it's like those people are carrying a bunch of wood. You don't really feel it. But these are real human beings. They are not statistics. Families are missing their loved ones they've lost. Young and old. If not for God who has been on our side, if not for God Almighty, we cried to him early and he heard us. But even in America, it's the churches, the protocols to safeguard people is the churches that are fighting it to go back and have fellowship, doing what that they have not done before. Something for a season to check something. They go to court, they, they, they disobey the laws. Freedom, not but a constitution. Constitution and the Bible, which one? Constitution of America and the Bible, which one is bigger? The Bible tells us protocols, shows us protocols to contain a contagion. And the Bible tells us that he put people in authority for such moments to give instructions. Unless they're telling you to forsake your God, why wouldn't you follow in the instruction on something that is to help secure everybody's health? One church in the first wave buried 46 people within two months. Or is it even one month in Michigan or I was during that time? 46 members of a congregation. Wisdom could have helped a little. Proverbs 4 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Some of us think we are defending the faith when we are breaking the faith and making it difficult for others to come to faith. Three year program. Unusual shaking. Coronavirus affecting everything man touches economy, socials, schools, churches. Nothing was left where it was before. People that had no faith before to, to, to get rid of headache are daring coronavirus. People that didn't have enough faith to ward off, ward off headache because we are charged. Yeah, yeah, nobody will lock us up. Meaning what? You had no faith to, to get rid of headache before and then you are daring a virus. That is not contagious. And it's all lip service. They don't have that faith. When John G. Lake had that faith, we saw it. But that was a special endowment. It was a special gifting. Yeah, I, I don't believe coronavirus will come to me, but I won't open my mouth and be arguing with you mouth to mouth. Because God did not only give me faith, he gave me wisdom. He gave me sense, common sense. Nothing was left where it was before. Remember where we started. Complete recovery. Remember that anchor scripture, Hosea 6, 1-3. So we're about to enter a third day. At the beginning of the year, on the 31st of December 2019, I told you there are four daily needs. You still need them now more than ever before. There are four daily needs you have to pray for and, and require God to give you every day. One, daily guidance. I'm just reminding us. Daily guidance of God. You need continuous re-anointing with the Holy Spirit. Did you notice that David was anointed three times for kingship? Saul was anointed once. The early disciples in Acts chapter 2 were baptized with the Holy Spirit on the door of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 4, they were praying for a fresh anointing and they were anointed afresh and they moved forward. You need 
fresh anointing every day. Keep it fresh. Keep the anointing fresh. So as for daily power, God does not plan for any man to move about on the earth without power. He told the disciples, don't even go to do anything for me until you receive power. How many of you remember Acts chapter 1 verse 8? Don't even do anything I'm telling you to do until you receive power. It's not in the plan of God that we go about anything on this earth without power. Even unbelievers know it. So since they don't want, they're not ready for God now, they're not ready to give their lives to Jesus Christ and be baptized with the Holy Spirit, they go to consult whoever they consult for power. So they give them chance and then they uh, fake replicas of divine power. So you need daily power. And we need it more so now. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Okay. Then remember to give thanks. And this is where we close. The year is wrapping up. One thing I will tell you. See, we said this year has been very turbulent and the shaking has been on. But I've experienced God's faithfulness at a dimension I've not touched all my life before this same year. This same year. I've experienced God's faithfulness at a dimension I have not touched all my life. How many of us can say that God has been faithful this year? And that's from your experience, not just by, I'm not talking of by faith now. You can look at, and you said this year God has been so faithful. How many of us can say it? Um, awesome things he has done in the same year, in the same place. In the same place. A separation. In the same place. Progress. Promotions. Favor openings. New businesses formed. Thriving. Moving forward. In the same year. In the same place. So it's a time to remember to give thanks. This year has been about God's faithfulness. He made a difference. Clear difference. All the way. Remarkable things. So let's read in closing. Let's read from the first six verses of Psalm 92. The same year when they are shaking all over the earth. When the mighty have begged for food, the same year. Scholarships, the same year. Unprecedented favors, in the same year, in the same place. Psalm 92. Let's read from verse 1. Let's stand as we read, and I close there. Can we read it together? Ah, I didn't hear this sound. I think feedback is part of communication. Okay, let's go. One, two, go. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a foolish, nor does a fool understand this. Praise the Lord. With this, I've wrapped up on teaching for the year. The rest is about God and thanksgiving and celebration of his faithfulness and his almightiness. That's the rest of the year. Let's prepare our hearts in thanksgiving. Let's tell him we recognize you did this. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Is there anyone here you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Can you indicate by raising your hand wherever you are? Is there anyone that wants to give his life to Jesus Christ? Anyone? Okay, God bless you. Father, beyond what I've said today, build your word into our hearts. Expand the revelation in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, let's remember that today we are taking two offerings. One for the, as the main offering, and the next one is the helplings offering. Remember, we have been announcing those things. And please remember to drop other items that have been listed for the helplings ministry. Your name, we worship you with our offerings. We thank you that we are able to worship you even with the substance you have given us. May you be blessed, may you be exalted, may you be lifted up on high forever. Father, even next week and in the weeks to come, Father, we shall give even more. We shall thank you in an acceptable manner. In Jesus' name, take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, Hallowed be your name Faithful God You are worthy to receive All the praise You alone You're the air that I breathe The song that I sing Lover of my soul With you There is no impossibility With you I can move mountains Whatever you say Surely come to pass. I don't.